What's up, familia? Welcome to set Big Week. Hope you guys are doing good. Keep your tune the lines. Got your dough secure. All right, man. Let's get into a scary trucker story. It was a foggy night. I was driving along Interstate 40 doing my usual trucking job. I'd been on the road for hours, heading towards Amarillo, Texas. I can't say I hadn't done this road countless times before, but something felt different that night. The air was thick and heavy, and the distant sounds of nature seemed to be replaced by an eerie silence. As the night wore on, I tried to focus on the road, but my mind kept drifting back to a story I'd heard from a fellow trucker at the last stop. He told me about a haunted stretch of highway not too far from where I was. It was said to be cursed, and people often reported strange occurrences, like ghostly figures appearing on the side of the road, only to vanish when approached. I didn't believe in that kind of stuff, but somehow the thought of it still managed to creep under my skin. I decided to take a break, hoping to take some steam off. I pulled into a small truck stop, nestled between the towering trees that lined the road. The place was deserted, with just a single flickering streetlight illuminating the parking lot. Alright, so I've been on that highway quite a few times, Highway 40, but I've never taken it, uh, I've never gone to Amarillo, Texas. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what part of the stretch he's talking about, because it's a, it's a pretty long freeway, but I, I've been on that, uh, I've been on that freeway before. Parked my rig, turned off the engine, and leaned back in my seat rubbing my tired eyes. As I sat there, trying to collect my thoughts, I noticed something odd in my rear view mirror. There was another truck parked a few spaces away from mine, with its lights off. I hadn't seen it when I pulled in, but it looked old and rusty, like it hadn't moved in years. The cab was dark, but I could see the faint outline of a man sitting in the driver's seat, staring straight ahead. My heart began to race as I tried to convince myself that it was just another trucker, taking a break like me. But there was something off about the way he was sitting there, motionless, in the darkness. I decided to get out of my truck to stretch my legs, hoping that maybe I could get a better look at the guy and put my mind at ease. As I stepped out, the cold air hit me like a ton of bricks. It was unnaturally chilly, and the fog seemed to be getting thicker by the minute. I walked around the front of my rig, trying not to make it obvious that I was checking out the other truck. My heart was starting to beat fast as I slowly approached the rusty old vehicle. I was just a few feet away when I noticed something that freaked me out. The truck's license plate was covered in what appeared to be dried blood, and the cab's windows were smeared with streaks of red. My instincts screamed at me to run, but my legs felt like they were made of warm jelly. I was frozen in place, unable to look away from the grisly scene. That's when I heard a low, deep growl that emanating from the cab of the truck, followed by the sound of heavy breathing. I felt my blood run cold, I knew I had to get away from that truck as quickly as possible. As I backed away, I heard the creak of the rusty door as it began to open, but I refused to look back. I sprinted towards my rig, fumbling with the keys as I tried to unlock the door. Once I was safely inside, I locked the doors, started the engine, and tore out of that parking lot. The Alright. Real quick, man. A um, few things that he's saying right there, okay? So he went into a small truck stop. Um, yeah, there are some very small truck stops where it's just kind of like a dirt lot. And for those, you know, a truck stop, it can have trucks there in the truck stop, but it can be very lonely as well because if everybody's in their truck, a truck stop can be pretty eerie and lonely, man, if it's not. You know in a town or city or anything like that it can be very quiet dog and shady at, at times I don't want to really get too much into that but yeah man um, wow all right uh, oh and another thing you know you heard him say he was fumbling with his keys you might be thinking like okay well then why did he lock the truck when you get out of your truck and you're gonna walk around do want to lock the truck because when you're on the other side of the truck or in the back of the truck you never know if somebody could jump in all right and then hide out in the sleeper or something like that so yeah that's 
uh, that's something to be aware of. The trail of dust behind me. As I sped down the highway, it felt like I was being pursued by something. The fog had grown so thick that it was difficult to see more than a few feet in front of me. But I pressed on, desperate to put as much distance between me and that truck stop as possible. Every now and then, I could have sworn I saw the faint outline of that rusty truck in my rearview mirror. But it would always disappear when I tried to focus on it. My heart raced, and my hands were slick with sweat on the steering wheel. I couldn't tell if my mind was playing tricks on me or if the truck was really there, following me through the night. Hours passed, and the sun began to rise, casting an eerie glow through the fog that still clung to the road. I was exhausted and running low on fuel, but I was too terrified to stop. My whole body ached from the tension, and my head was pounding. But I knew that if I stopped, even for a moment, whatever that thing was might catch up to me. As the day wore on, the fog finally began to dissipate, and I could see the road more clearly. I still felt like someone was following me. But there was no sign of the rusty truck in my rear view mirror. I tried to convince myself that it had all been a hallucination brought by the tea, but deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. Eventually, I made it to Amarillo, exhausted and on bench. I pulled into the first truck stop I found and parked my rig. I needed to rest, but the thought of closing my eyes and leaving myself vulnerable to whatever was out there terrified me. I decided to call my boss and explain the situation, hoping that maybe he could offer some advice or reassurance. I told him everything that had happened from the strange truck at the truck stop to the feeling of being pursued. He listened patiently, never interrupting or questioning the validity of my story. When I was finished, he was silent for a moment before speaking in a low, serious tone. He told me that he heard similar stories from other truckers over the years, and that there was an unspoken rule among them to never stop at that particular truck stop on Interstate 40. It was said to be cursed, and those who stopped there would be haunted by an evil presence that would follow them for the rest of their lives. He advised me to take some time off and get some rest, promising that he'd find someone to cover my road in the meantime. I took his advice, and I've never been back to that stretch of Interstate 40 since. It's been years, but I can still feel the presence of whatever it was that stopped me that night, lurking just out of sight, waiting for me to let my guard down. I know I'll never be able to escape it completely, but I've learned to live with the fear and to always trust my instincts on the road. That haunted truck stop and the rusty old truck continue to haunt my dreams, serving as a constant reminder that there are things out there that we can't explain. Things that are better left alone. Wow. Okay. So, you know, now I'm curious, man, since you brought up, uh, State 40. I wonder what truck stop that would be that he's talking about. But, um, you know, one thing that he said right there that he was really hauling ass, right? Through the fog. I gotta tell you guys this, man. The fog can be very, very scary. I'm being serious, man, because you can't really see. I, there, I've been in fog just so thick. That you, you can't see in front of you, man. So, you know, if there's an accident, if there's a vehicle that stopped, um, oh man, you really got to go slow just in case, you know, anything, man. If there's any debris, anything on, on, on the road, man, you don't want to, you know, hit it. But, man, he's over there talking about that he's uh, really hauling ass through the fog, man, because he's scared. Wow, that's quite a sight to see, Holmes. You know, if you see another truck with blood, uh, you know, smeared on the license plate and on the windows, that's uh, that's something crazy. You know, you uh, you're a witness, so <laughs> I can understand the paranoia he was going through, man, after seeing something like that. Hey, man, I'm telling you guys, it can be pretty damn sketchy on what you can. Uh, Counter out here, but with that, familia, as always, live your life like you're on the road, be aware of your surroundings, and always keep a safe distance. Blood makes you live, but loyalty makes you run. Until next time, this is Ed the Toll Trucker. Over now.